I'm here now with Gemma Freeman, uh, Managing Director of Hudson Frankel, the Cuban cigar importer to the UK. Also, Gemma, how are you? Very well, thank you, Tom. Good. And uh, you are, I believe, uh, at home. Uh, it's funny, but you're funny very well and uh, unafflicted by COVID. Your chat is very bad, is that right? Yes, we're very well. Thank you for asking. We've been we've been at home like everybody else since early middle March, um, and everybody has stayed well and healthy. So we're very very lucky. Good. And people may notice that in comparison to the other videos I'm doing, there's a slight difference in this one in that you and I are delving into your auction lot. Not the same one, <laughs> but uh, you have very generously donated a box of uh, regional edition UK uh, cigars. Um, and so why don't you fill in the gaps for people listening and uh, tell everybody a little bit about the auction Um We have been delighted to support this cause um, and we've donated a box of a cigar called the El Rey del Mundo La Reina, which was the UK's regional edition. Um, We released it in 2019. It was a cigar that we worked on for two, two and a half years after we first came up with the idea of requesting a thin gauge cigar the fashion has been very much for wider gauge cigars recently and we knew that it was a risk to request a thin gauge cigar because it's a very very difficult cigar to be made to make um, in terms of technically getting the consistency of burn and draw through a cigar this long and this slim um, is very difficult we were really lucky with the cigar because when we launched the Cohiba Talisman in November 2017, one of the senior members of Tabba Cuba responsible for the production of cigars came to London to support the launch. And he bought with him 50 of the La Reina for us to taste um, in advance of, of them being produced. And so we were able to, at that point, choose between two different blends um, or give some input into which blend. And, and at the time, he told us that the cigar was very likely to be produced in El Leguito, the Cohiba factory, mm-hmm. which again was a, was, a, was a great privilege for us because as far as I'm aware, no regional edition has ever been produced in El Leguito. Um, it is very much the home of Cohiba still, although some other cigars are, are occasionally produced there, but mainly diplomatic cigars and, and the odd um, bits and pieces. Um, so we were absolutely delighted to hear that it was going to be produced in El Aguito. And there then followed a year, year and a half of really close collaboration with the Cuban cigar industry. We went to Cuba a couple of times. We tasted the cigars. Um, we saw them in production. We met the team responsible, not only the the factory director, Jose Perez, but we met the lady in charge of quality control. And with a cigar like this, quality control has been absolutely key to it being such a such a lovely cigar. Um, we were told during one of our visits that they had asked two rollers to make the whole production. So that's three thousand, three and a half thousand boxes with about well, with twenty four cigars in each. So over eighty thousand cigars, um, and they had two rollers making the whole production, and they took the unusual step of weighing every single cigar individually, not just using the draw machine, but weighing it. And any cigar that had one gram discrepancy was rejected on quality basis. Um, They also chose really lovely tobacco for this cigar. Um, um, We've been incredibly fortunate insofar as it's been a real pleasure to be involved in not only that process, but launching a cigar that that was so well received by the market. Um, It goes against the trend, although we are seeing more and more people smoking thinner thinner gauge cigars. Um, But it's a cigar that we are very, very happy to to have had the honour of of coming through our market. Yeah, I have to say I love it. I mean, I think because, as as you pointed out, with with longer cigars, which... um, uh, you know, it's always tempting to sort of get into when you have an hour, an hour and a half free. You're often going to find cigars in the market that is just quite a lot to take on. You're going to have to have a real light on afterwards. 
Whereas with this, yeah. you can settle into it, um, but it's not overpowering. It actually is a, it's a delicious cigar and um, fits nice into the jaw, so it's comfortable to smoke. And yeah. um, the, the blend itself is, 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 I would say, fairly mild. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's, yes. smoke, but it's a mild smoking. Um, Which it should be, because that is the profile of the El Rey Del Mundo brand. So yes. it, and, it is correct in that term. Exactly. And, and the, um, the construction, as you pointed out, with the, uh, with the rollers, I mean, the construction is brilliant. I've, I've, I've smoked several of these now, and they've all been terrifically well. I mean, it is quite something. So whoever gets this is, is, is buying a really, really top quality box of cigars. And, you know, you and I have joked in the past about the kind of lost breed sometimes that happens with Cuban cigars. But, you know, these are really good um, collection of cigars, and, and you've done a really amazing job putting them into the market and they've been super popular so whoever gets this is um you know both investing in you know great cigars which are going to go up and work but also are exclusive to the uk so people outside the uk just aren't going to find them no and and you know they have now largely sold out or we have sold out of them um, so they are now you know a, a popular item amongst collectors because i think cigars like this tend to age in a very interesting way. If you look at a Cohiba Lanceros or a Trinidad Fondadoris or similar cigars of this profile, mm. the way they age is, is very, very interesting. Um, so it's a lovely box of cigars to, to put away, keep, um, save them for, for another rainy day. Perfect. Well, uh, thank you so much and, uh, for donating that. But tell me how hunters have been getting on during COVID, like, you know, it's a big company, lots to do. So, so how how's everything been? Well, I I think probably like for most people, it's been a roller coaster, mm. and and it you know as we all know, it, it it happened so quickly. The sort of arrival of COVID in the UK, we we had to move quite quite fast. We shut the offices down. We set everybody up from home. The normal sorts of things that that most people have done. Um, what we saw in March was a complete sort of resounding silence. Um, and we were very, very worried about the rest of the year. Yeah. And then to the to the trades credit, anybody that had an online business or was able to do so really continued to trade. And what we have seen through April, May and are now seeing in June is that our trade is really resilient. And I think there's a lot of factors there. I think mail order um, is is able to continue because the brilliant service that couriers and dpd and whoever it is you use are, are offering so we are able to get stock to them and they're able to get stock onto consumers i think in the nicest possible way people have found time maybe to think a little bit more about how they how they might choose to pass their day whether it's to make time for a cigar or maybe go through their humidor and smoke cigars they haven't looked at for a while perhaps take some advice from a retailer but we have definitely been hearing from our customers stories of of you know positive stories of people rediscovering the pleasure of smoking a cigar when their lives aren't quite so busy they're not commuting they're not rushing around so much so that has been really positive. And, and the other thing we've seen is a, is a big increase in activity on, on social media. So events, interviews, people talking to each other. And that's been great because one of the things that the cigar community has worked so hard to do in recent years is find ways of being a close community. Mm. And, and the new world we're in with Zoom and Teams and events has, has offered us you know, the ability to keep that connection between all of us going. Um, and so it has definitely been a mixed bag. I think there are many challenges ahead. I think the opening of shops this week will be very telling. Um, and I think in certain areas of, of our country, it's going to be harder than others. But we've got the cigars, the retailers are working hard, and we'll have to just keep a you know, close eye on, on, on how things evolve over the next few months. But so far, um, it's been fine, actually. Amazing. Well, great. I mean, I mean you know, that's, that's good news. And, and actually, for people I've been speaking to with these uh, chats, there's been a fair amount of positivity, not as much um, doing and gloom as I thought 
you know, you might oh. be and, and easily could be. And I'm, I'm sure there are places and sectors where it, it is that. Um, but it's nice of speaking to people, and there's a sort of fair amount of positivity in the air. Um, but why don't you um, sort of tell us sort of a little bit why you wanted to get involved with this particular question? And I, I know that we've done plenty of these before, so that may be it. But your um, uh, your generosity is. Is, is, is equally well noted as, as it has been in the past. Well, I mean, it's a it's a great cause, and and it needs as much support as as possible. Um, I think what is going to happen in countries outside the UK is going to be devastating for many of them, mm -hmm. and I think the WHO is well placed to support places and people that that we don't know how to do so directly as individuals. So being part of an auction is a real privilege. Um, we of course like to support anything that the rate does because what you do is brilliant frankly um and and we're delighted to be associated with it so thank you very much for inviting us to be part of this tom no it's great and you know we're talking here on, on tuesday and, and the box has already raised a fair amount of money but people should keep bidding if you're watching this um it is a tough competition for whoever wins the box to get bidding um Gemma, thank you so much for um joining me and chatting through this and uh, giving people a bit more information uh you know very much from the great experts now and uh uh, I look forward to speaking to you on the side of all this when we know what it's gone for hopefully huge amounts of money and <laughs> um, I'll uh, yeah it'll be, um, uh, thank you again for, for joining in absolute pleasure thank you Tom